plutocracy or plutarchy, defines a society or a system ruled and dominated by the small minority of the wealthiest citizens. The first known use of the term was in 1652. Unlike systems such as democracy, capitalism, socialism or anarchism, plutocracy is not rooted in an established political philosophy. The concept of plutocracy may be advocated by the wealthy classes of a society in an indirect or surreptitious fashion, though the term itself is almost always used in a pejorative sense. Usage The term plutocracy is generally used as a pejorative to describe or warn against an undesirable condition. Throughout history, political thinkers such as Winston Churchill, 19th century French sociologist and historian Alexis de Tocqueville, 19th century Spanish monarchist Juan Donoso Corte copyright s and today Noam Chomsky have condemned plutocrats for ignoring their social responsibilities, using their power to serve their own purposes and thereby increasing poverty and nurturing class conflict, corrupting societies with greed and hedonism. Examples Examples of plutocracies include the Roman Empire, some city-states in ancient Greece, the civilization of Carthage, the Italian city-states Merchant Republics of Venice, Florence, Genoa, and pre-World War II Empire of Japan. One modern, formal example of what some critics have described as a plutocracy is the City of London. The city has a unique electoral system for its local administration. More than two-thirds of voters are not residents, but rather representatives of businesses and other bodies that occupy premises in the city with votes distributed according to their numbers of employees. The principal justification for this arrangement is that most of the services provided by the corporation are used by the businesses in the city. In fact about 450,000 non-residents constitute the city's daytime population, far outnumbering the city's 7,000 residents. Modern Politics Historically, wealthy individuals and organizations have exerted influence over the political arena. In the modern era, many democratic republics permit fundraising for politicians who frequently rely on such income for advertising their candidacy to the voting public. Whether through individuals, corporations or advocacy groups, such donations are often believed to engender a cronyist or patronage system by which major contributors are awarded on a quid pro quo basis. While campaign donations need not directly affect the legislative decisions of elected representatives, the natural expectation of donors is that their needs will be served by the person to whom they donated. If not, it is in their self-interest to fund a different candidate or political organization. While quid pro quo agreements are generally illegal in most democracies, they are difficult to prove, short of a well-documented paper trail. A core basis of democracy, being a politician's ability to freely advocate policies which benefit his or her constituents, also makes it difficult to prove that doing so might be a crime. Even the granting of appointed positions to a well-documented contributor may not transgress the law, particularly if the appointee appears to be suitably qualified for the post. Some systems even specifically provide for such patronage. United States Some modern historians, politicians and economists state that the United States was effectively plutocratic for at least part of the Gilded Age and Progressive Era periods between the end of the Civil War until the beginning of the Great Depression. President Theodore Roosevelt became known as the Trust Buster for his aggressive use of United States antitrust law, through which he managed to break up such major combinations as the largest railroad and Standard Oil, the largest oil company. According to historian David Burton, a Euro OE when it came to domestic political concerns, Tri Euro unregistered trademark S. Beat Noir was the plutocracy. In his autobiographical account of taking on monopolistic corporations as president, T.R. recounted A Euro unregistered trademark, a Euro unregistered trademark, a Euro we had come to the stage where for our people what was needed was a real democracy. And of all forms of tyranny, the least attractive and the most vulgar is the tyranny of mere wealth. The tyranny of a plutocracy, a Euro unregistered trademark, a Euro unregistered trademark. The Sherman Antitrust Act had been enacted in 1890, with large industries reaching monopolistic or near monopolistic levels of market concentration and financial capital increasingly integrating corporations. A handful of very wealthy heads of large corporations began to exert increasing influence over industry, 
public opinion and politics after the Civil War. Money, according to contemporary progressive and journalist Walter Well, was the mortar of this edifice, with ideological differences among politicians fading and the political realm becoming a mere branch in a still larger, integrated business. The state, which through the party formally sold favors to the large corporations, became one of their departments. In his book The Conscience of a Liberal, in a section entitled The Politics of Plutocracy, economist Paul Krugman says plutocracy took hold because of three factors, at that time, the poorest quarter of American residents were ineligible to vote, the wealthy funded the campaigns of politicians they preferred, and vote buying was feasible, easy and widespread, as were other forms of electoral fraud such as ballot box stuffing and intimidation of the other party's voters. Post-World War II, in modern times, the term is sometimes used pejoratively to refer to societies rooted in state corporate capitalism or which prioritize the accumulation of wealth over other interests. According to Kevin Phillips, author and political strategist to U.S. President Richard Nixon, the United States is a plutocracy in which there is a fusion of money and government. Tricia Freeland, author of Plutocrats, the rise of the new global super-rich and the fall of everyone else, says that the present trend towards plutocracy occurs, and is self-justified, because the rich feel, their own personal self-interest is in the interests of everybody else. Some researchers have said the U.S. may be drifting towards a form of oligarchy, as individual citizens have less impact than economic elites and organized interest groups upon public policy. A study conducted by political scientists Martin Gilens and Benjamin Page, which was released in April 2014, stated that their analyses suggest that majorities of the American public actually have little influence over the policies our government adopts. That Gilens and Page do not characterize the U.S. as an oligarchy, or plutocracy per se. However, they do apply the concept of civil oligarchy as used by Jeffrey A. Winters with respect to the U.S. Most recently, Jeffrey Winters has posited a comparative theory of a euro oe oligarchy, a euro in which the wealthiest citizens a euro even an AA euro oe civil oligarchy a euro like the United States a euro dominate policy concerning crucial issues of wealth and income protection. On Al Jazeera on August 13, 2014, Professor Noam Chomsky of MIT in response to questions related to U.S. responses to the Iraq-Gaza situation, effectively repeated the quote on American public influence over policies, when questioned further he suggested that significant amounts of research suggested that the U.S. was in effect a plutocracy. As a propaganda term, in the political jargon and propaganda of fascist Italy, Nazi Germany and the Communist International, Western democratic states were referred to as plutocracies, with the implication being that a small number of extremely wealthy individuals were controlling the countries and holding them to ransom. Plutocracy replaced democracy and capitalism as the principal fascist term for the United States and Great Britain during the Second World War. For the Nazis, the term was often a code word for the Jews. See also References Further reading, Howard Milford Ryerson. The American Plutocracy. New York, Holland Publishing. Norwood, Thomas Manson. Plutocracy, or, American White Lavery. A Politico-Social Novel. New York, The American News Company. Pettigrew, Richard Franklin. Triumphant Plutocracy, The Story of American Public Life from 1870 to 1920. New York. The Academy Press. Reed, John Calvin. The New Plutocracy. New York, Abbey Press. Winters, Jeffrey Oligarchy Cambridge University Press, External Links, The Dictionary Definition of Plutocracy at Wikshinery, Quotations Related to Plutocracy at Wikiquote.